pricing a bond is relatively conventional type exercise in um, finance. So we have here a very simple estimation of a bond price. Uh, we want to determine the bond price. The bond has a coupon rate of 6%. It has a face value of 1000 and matures in three years. And we are assuming a discount rate of 5.6%. So that 5.6% is applied um, each year. And then as the one year, two year, three years passes, we apply an exponentially ever increasing discount factor. And uh, we express then the value of these future cash flows in present value. So this here represents the bond price. Um, typically, however, um, we know the bond price because the bond price is something determined in the market and um, there are frequently bond auctions, uh, government agencies, typically treasury departments, uh, auction off bonds at uh, regular intervals. That price is known and we know the coupon structure, we know the face and what we really want to determine is the yield to maturity. And there's lots of ways of doing that with Excel and with code that provided uh, examples of C++ implementations using bisection and so on. But um, occasionally it's um, you have to do this uh, by hand and uh, it's a little bit more uh, involved um, and it, involve, it tends to involve using a technique called interpolation. One interpolation technique is to use this formula here, where we basically have to guess uh, the interest rate or the yield on the instrument consistent with the bond price. And um, when we're trying to solve yield to maturity, unfortunately, there's no single slam dunk time formula that uh, in a closed form gives us the value of R here. R cannot be expressed on its own and brought to one side of the equal sign or something that we have to iteratively do a grid search for. Um, if we don't have a computer Excel or Gold Seek type function or a grid search or a solver or a bisection function that we can call up as a C++ sub, uh, sub, subroutine, then we use typically an interpolation type process. Um, so we initially guess. Our basic starting point here would be, would be we, we guess a rate of interest. Um, we know that if we discount a coupon, a bond with a coupon of 6% and discount it at 6%, the value of the bond has to be its face uh, because that's the definition of a, a power bond. And so if the value of the bond is trading for a thousand and ten seventy seven, then this higher interest rate discount factor of six will produce a value for the bond a thousand thousand that is lower than the the market price of the bond or the market value of the bond. Likewise we know if we lower the rate of interest we push up the bond price and a lower rate of interest here at 4% using this present value annuity factor and discounting again here the single face value at uh, the, th the third year this, using this third year discount factor we find the value of the bonds 1055.50 and so with our, our high interest rate higher interest rate we get a lower bond price at our lower interest rate we get a higher bond price Importantly for us, these two prices are either side of the market value that we were searching for. So we're looking for a rate of interest consistent with this bond price. And we have, using our, our initial estimates here, initial guesses, we've discovered that with 4%, the present value of the bond discounting 4% would be 1055.50. And discounting at 6%, it would be a par bond and the value would be equivalent to its face. Once we have those in place, we can then uh, work out, we can then implement the interpolation uh, formula that we have here, we, where a, lowercase a, 
denotes the lower rate of interest, the lowercase b denotes the higher rate of interest, where capital A represents the difference between that uh, estimated model value at the low rate of interest, so the at uh, with four percent discounting at four percent, this bond would be thousand fifty five. The market price is thousand ten seventy seven. We take that difference, and that's capital A. And likewise, with the higher rate of interest, we determine B, the capital B, and capital B is this amount here. It is the difference between the face the I guess the value the, when we have the six percent the value of the bond will be equal to a thousand so the from the model we determine this one thousand and we subtract away the market price and we get this negative ten seventy seven and the value in fact for capital B has to be negative in order for interpolation to work properly so this doesn't come as a surprise in fact we want that to happen and so from there then we basically apply our model so we have a a is the the internal rate of return or the yield to maturity is the the, the lowercase a is four percent capital a capital a is this forty four seventy three the capital a again is forty four seventy three and capital B, we have a double negative, it's a negative B, so negative by negative 1077 produces a positive. The double negative produces a, double, a positive, and then we multiply that in turn by the differential between both rates, the high rate and the low rate of interest between the 6% and the 4%. When we estimate our internal rate of return or our yield to maturity, the bond value is then the interest rate is 5.6 percent which is consistent with the initial value that we had here so with five we know that when we had we discounted 5.6 percent we got a thousand ten seventy seven likewise from our interpolation exercise we also have when we work out our values in reverse the only interest rate consistent with this present value for the bond is also 5.6 percent we're a little bit out this interpolation technique is not completely yielding a, a very precise figure but it's bringing bringing us relatively close to 5.6 is 5.61 percent a little bit higher but in interpolation will produce a small margin of error the wider a and b are from each other if we went 10 and 1 percent the margin of error would be much higher okay because we're in a two percent differential between the four percent and six percent the error as a result is a bit smaller another example then of something and um, a similar type of uh, question if we had if we want to, to discover the yield to maturity on an eight percent semi-annual coupon bond in this case it's not annual it's semi-annual with a face of one thousand dollars and maturing in five years where the market price of the bond is a thousand and seventy four again we've got to go through the same set of steps the only difference we might In our approach here would be instead of using the the relatively straightforward present value of annuity that we have here when the periodicity of the coupon is higher than one t once a year then we've got to allow for m being introduced into this present value annuity otherwise it's the same set of steps we we guess uh, uh, different rates of interest so we guess here in this instance I guess initially at 5% and when we work out the present value of annuity with 5% uh, we find the value of the bond is 1,031.28 which is higher than the target value 
then we, if we raise the rate of interest to 7%, we find when we apply our present value annuity factor and our discounting factor on the face, we find that the value here generated is 1,041, which is lower than this 1,074.17. That allows us then to apply this formula, which we do where the lower case A is 5%. The capital A we determine by taking the market price from the model. So at 5%, the bond would be equal to 1,131. We subtract away the market price of the bond and we get 5711, 11, which is capital A. And then in turn, at the higher rate of interest, lower case B, the uh, difference between the model price associated at 7%, so 7%, if we apply the discount factor of 7%, the value of the bond would be 1041.58. We subtract away the market price and we get this negative 32.28. Again, we, we want a negative and that's capital B. So our, our, the way we implement our interpolation formula, lowercase a, 5%, uppercase capital A, which is the 5711, again capital A, negative B, B is a negative, so we, and we want that negative, it's a double negative, and then we multiply that in turn by the difference between the higher rate of interest and the lower rate of interest, and the value we get is 6.27%.